hi welcome to my channel in today's video i am putting together all of my top tips for selling at craft fairs so if you have any lined up or if you've never been to one before then hopefully this video will help you with everything you need to have a successful time <laughs> So if you're new and don't know who I am, uh, my name's Emily. So I'm an illustrator and I have done craft fairs in the past, several years ago, and they went well. But this year I'm really getting back into it. I have loads lined up towards Christmas. If you've watched any of my past videos, you'll see that I've been spending a lot of time on my table and prepping and making new products. And I have just come back from a really successful time at a festival where I had a table. So I thought it was good to put into a video everything I've learned. I have another one in two days time, so <laughs> fingers crossed that goes well. But hopefully these tips that I give you help. I have put them all in a list on my iPad and I've also got some questions from people on Instagram, so I'm going to answer them as well. So yeah, so let's get into my top tips. So the first thing you need to think about is, is a craft fair for you? And it's a really hard question to answer because I've had very, very successful craft fairs where, you know, the table, I've paid for the table and the money I've made on the day has more than paid for it and I've made a profit. There's also been times where I've paid £20 for a table and I thought this is going to be great, I'm going to make loads of money, the table was cheap and nobody bought a thing. It's honestly a really hard question to answer. In my opinion, you've got to just try and sometimes you need to just pay for the table and sometimes it doesn't work out. It's all good experience though. So have a look how much they cost. I'm doing a few tables that are gonna cost me 20 pounds. I've just done one, the festival cost me 100 pounds for two days. You know, it, it the cost varies. A good question to ask is how much footfall they're expecting. So. You know, if you, I've been to some that are so quiet and nobody's walking around. They're good to do to build your confidence, but please don't expect many sales. <laughs> um, whereas the festival I've just done, you know, they had over a quarter of a million people walking around. I did really well. So it, it all just depends. I say, give it a try. Your first one, maybe do a cheaper one, but don't expect them to be as busy. So my next tip on the build up to the craft fair, you wanna be posting on social media. I say this because at my last fair, the amount of people that came to my table and said, oh, I saw you on Instagram. I saw that you were gonna be here. I came to find you. That is just the best compliment ever. So post that you're gonna be there, post your products before you go, use hashtags, tag that you're going to the event. I don't know about you, but if I'm going somewhere, I always go on Instagram, I search the hashtag, I, I, I search for where it is just to see who's going to be there. Make sure you are tagging your products before you go to the event. Get people excited that you're going to be there. I think that's a great tip. So one of my biggest tips, and I actually mentioned this in my last video, which was a vlog of me at my craft fair. So I'll tag that below if you want to watch that. But in that video, I talk about the importance of your table and the display. In my opinion, it's fine having beautiful products, but if your table doesn't look inviting, nobody's going to look at them because people are just going to walk past. So I put as much effort into the design of my table as much as the products. Something for you to think about is the colours you're going to use. So I have a palette um, on my Instagram and you'll, you'll see I use peaches and purples and blues and I wanted my table to reflect that as well. I just thought that my table was basically an extension of my branding and maybe that's something for you to think about as well. It doesn't matter what you sell, you can design your table to reflect your brand. So think about the colours you want to use, think about how your products sit together on the table, whether it looks harmonious and nice, think about the decoration. These are things that are an expense, but they just make it look more pretty. So I bought bunting, I bought nice flowers and um, plants, everything to just make my table just that little bit prettier. And the amount of compliments I got from it just shows that it was worth it. Even down to what I was wearing, you know, I decided to kind of match my outfit a little bit to my table. I mean, it's not for everybody, you know, wear jeans and a t-shirt, it really doesn't matter. But 
I just really wanted everything to be thought about and I thought as a designer, as an illustrator, I thought it would just be quite a nice thing for somebody to see as they're walking by. Another thing to think about when you're planning your layout is work off different heights. So instead of having everything just laid on a table, really play with different heights. Get people's eyes dotted about when they're looking at your table. I use boxes to prop things up. It also gives you more space um, when you're using different heights. So my next tip leads on from the last one in terms of planning the look of your table. And that is practice your setup before you go. <laughs> I cannot stress this enough. So on the lead up to my latest table, I think I did three practice runs in my kitchen. Now that might seem excessive and it might have been, but it took the stress out of setting up that morning at the, at the event. I knew exactly where everything was going to be placed. I had laid out on the floor of my kitchen the space I was allocated. So in this instance, I had a three meter by three meter gazebo. So I laid that out on my kitchen floor. I put my tables up and I planned everything. I photographed where everything was going to go. And it just meant on the morning of, there was no stress. I knew everything was going to fit. I knew everything was going to look right. I just think if you, if you have the time to do it, do a test run, do several test runs. It's definitely worth it. It's also worth bearing in mind that you have different sizes depending on your craft fair. So at the most recent one, like I said, I had a three meter by three meter gazebo. My one on Sunday, I have half that size. So I have three meters width, but I only have one and a half meters depth. So I can't do the same setup as I had last week. So I'm gonna have to change it. But because I've done the test run already, I know the space I've got, it'll all be fine. So yeah, that's another top tip, do a practice run. So it all depends on what you're actually selling, but for me as an illustrator, I also do personalized portraits or custom portraits. Obviously I can't do them on the day, I take orders for them. So because of this, what I do is I set up an easel and I have a portrait that I've already done, made big, and I have it there next to my table. The great thing about this was it's a talking point. It's right there as people walk past for people to point at and it draws attention. So this is my next tip is try and have something large, something big, a big sign, something when people are walking past fast and they don't plan to stop at your table for them to say, oh, look at that. They're more likely to come over and have a look. If I didn't have that easel up, I don't think the fair would have gone very well last weekend. The, the amount of people that came over and chatted to me because they saw the easel and they liked what they saw. I just think people walk past fast. They're not, they're talking, they're not paying attention. So, I mean, it is hard if you're not doing something like that, but maybe have a think, have a think of, you know, if you sell prints, maybe have one of them printed big, frame it, put it on an easel. I, it's a great talking point. People can see it from afar and they don't have to come over to your table and, and have a look. It's, it's something to draw their attention. So once you've got them to your table, a way to keep them is to have items at different price points. I also mentioned this in my last video, if you saw it. So in the past, I have sold prints and cards, but I've had things that start from about five pounds, which is fine, you know, and I sold things. But at my most recent fair, I decided to put items on my table that were very cheap. And that started with badges at 50p. The great thing about having badges for 50p or postcards or 50, for 50p meant that it meant that I, I did quite a few sales from people that just didn't have an intention of buying, but 50p is nothing. So, you know, it was quite easy for them to pull 50p out and, you know, buy something. A lot of people though, once they, you know, decided on buying that 50p item, they'd look over and say, oh, there's a card there for a pound or, oh, there's a print there for four pounds. And a lot of people spent 20 plus pounds without an intention of doing so when they came to the table. And I think it's because I started with that low price point and, you know, they found more things. Whereas if the lowest item they saw was five pounds, you know, that's a big stretch if you're not planning on spending any money. Yeah, look at what you can sell, put things on your table at low price points. You know, I did a sale section on my, on my table with just old prints and old postcards that were tucked away in a cupboard that I'd forgotten about. 
you know, I'm not that bothered about making any money on those. So popped sale on there and they went, you know, my force cards went, it was crazy. So definitely different price points, start very low and work your way up. You know, I was selling portraits for over a hundred pounds and badges for 50p. And I had that whole price point in between. So it's suitable for everybody. So my next tip in terms of taking money is buy a card reader. Take a card reader with you. Card readers are not expensive at all. And if you follow me on Instagram, you'll see that two days before my last fair, my card reader died. Oh, it's a good job I got a replacement. But I will post some links of some different card readers below. I use PayPal at the minute, which isn't the mo isn't the cheapest option. You can get cheaper, but it's just something I'm used to. The great thing about card readers are Normally people are put off when there's cash, people don't carry cash anymore. The ability to let people do contactless was just perfect. People loved it. And yeah, I really recommend buying a, buying a card reader and displaying that you do take card. I think I got a lot of orders because people knew I took card and they didn't have cash on them. So another thing for your table, and this is something I've learned from past experience and really struggling with sales, is make your prices really, really clear. So what I've learned is some people would rather not buy anything because they're terrified to ask a price in case it's too high and they don't wanna pay it, and they would rather just walk away. So what I do now is just price everything. I make it very, very clear in front of every item how much it costs. So in theory, no one needs to talk to me. If they don't want to, they can just walk off. But by having the prices there, people can just say, yes, I'll buy this, thank you very much. In the past, I haven't laid out my pricing very well and it's it's been very clear that someone's looked at something and because they don't know the price, they thought, oh, I won't even bother. I won't even bother asking. Lay your prices out and make it very clear so people don't have to try and hunt for how much things cost really just put it right there, this is how much it's gonna be. You're probably more likely to get a sale. So a few questions on Instagram I had. One of the first ones was about different pieces of marketing I had on my table. So this is really important. There's different people out there. There's people that absolutely love coming to craft fairs. They love coming over and looking through everything and chatting to you and, you know, there's that, those sort of people. And then there's people that want to go past as fast as they can and not make eye contact and don't want to look at you because they're scared you're gonna try and sell to them. I can promise you we don't do that. <laughs> I don't do that anyway. I will just sit there, say hi and yeah. There's people that don't want to even look at your table, which is absolutely fine. There's some people though that are so really, really want to come and look, you can so tell, but they're terrified and all they want to do is walk past and grab a business card as fast as they can and then go and sit on a bench and look at you on Instagram. <laughs> It happened. It happened a lot. That's one of the things you need. You need business cards. You can get them very cheap. I'll post a, a link to who I use. Um, so on my table, I had business cards. I had them at the ends of the table for people to just quickly grab and not have to come over. I also had leaflets on the table. On one side, I had information about the portraits I did. The other side was information about me. And again, I put them at the ends of the table for people to just grab. I need to order some more because they pretty much went my last fair and then with every order in the bag that I gave them I popped a little thank you note in so that's just like a little postcard and that just said thank you and it had my details on it so they're the three types of marketing that I put on my table and it's definitely worth doing so like I mentioned before I sell portraits massive reason I do my fairs is yes to sell cards and prints that's wonderful but if I get just one portrait order that pays for the table and it makes it all worthwhile. So it's been five days since my last fair and I've had six orders from that festival. So it's just wonderful. And they're all people that came up to me, asked for a leaflet and I told them how to get in touch with me. So it's definitely worth just spending that time and making those little bits of marketing. So another question I got was about stock and how much stock to take with you. So obviously I'm an illustrator, I take prints and cards and stationery. I can't answer for every type of crafter because I don't, I really don't know. But for me, what I did was I printed 10 of each item. I was honestly worried that wouldn't be enough. It actually worked out okay. So some prints, I pretty much sold all of those on the day, but it was fine because I could come home and print more if I needed them for the next day. If you are printing externally, I would take a few more. It all depends on how busy it's gonna be. You've just kind of got to 
go for it and try. I have to say I liked the idea of some things looking like they were selling out on my table rather than keeping it fully stocked all the time. I just feel like it looks like you've done better and maybe that would entice people. I don't really know. It's so hard to answer how much stock to take. I It's trial and error. That's all I can say, trial and error. What I will say, if you've got an Etsy shop, then you know it's brilliant because you can have, you can just, anything you don't sell, you can put straight back on onto the shop. If you do multiple um, craft fairs, again, you've got stock ready to go to the next one. You don't need to worry so much. What I would think about is if you're doing sort of a Christmas fair, I would avoid trying to do too much Christmas stuff. This is just based on past experience. So my last Christmas fair was a few years ago and I did so much Christmas stock. I did Christmas cards, I did um, gift tags and just everything. And they did sell okay, but at the end, you know, I was stuck with all this stock and I was like, oh, what do I do? By the time the next Christmas had come, I didn't want to sell that, you know, it was old. I honestly, I think I lost quite a bit of money that Christmas because I just made too much. So this Christmas, I'm going to do a couple of Christmassy things but I'm not gonna go crazy on the Christmas. <laughs> I think at those sort of events, dress your table Christmassy, but um, but yeah, I would avoid doing too much seasonal stuff. But if you disagree, please let me know. Let me know your thoughts below. That's just me, my personal experience, so yeah. So a few people mentioned insurance on my Instagram and whether you need insurance and you know what, you need to do. Every single fair I've done and all the ones I know about ask for public liability insurance and you need to make sure you have that in place and you have proof of that when you go to your fair. Some places ask for it to be sent beforehand. So yes, you do need insurance. So this is just for the UK. If you're watching from America or wherever, I'm honestly not sure of the rules and I'm really, really sorry. In the UK, you need public liability insurance. I think the standard is you need 5 million cover. That's how much I have anyway. There's a few places you can get them. You don't have to pay a lot. I think I pay like two pounds a month. I will leave a link below for some places where you can get public liability insurance. It's definitely worth having anyway. If you're a freelancer, all you need to do is input what you do and you can print your certificate and take it along with you just in case anybody asks for it. And the final thing I got asked was where do I buy everything for my table so where I buy the greetings card holder and the boxes and everything all the visual things where did I buy it from and the answer for me is eBay again I'm gonna leave some links for things below so my greetings card holders were on eBay my tablecloth was from eBay my easel was from eBay just everything I could get cheap was on eBay so yeah so I will leave links below for everything I used I didn't pay a lot for anything really I try to keep everything as white and clean as possible with a few rose gold touches in terms of my decoration. So my bunting I had made from a shop on Etsy. I will link them below. Brilliant. I got some bunting from Hobbycraft. So another tip I have is to do with the setting up and the getting to your craft fair. So it is hard work. I really recommend buying some big storage boxes. I got mine from B&M, they were two for 12 pounds. They're really big. I have two of them. I have one to put all of my stock in and another one to have all of my, what would you call it? My things, my scissors, my blue tack, my rope, my everything I need to set up the table. So I have those two boxes and they have everything in it. So I do recommend you take a pair of scissors, some blue tack, some tape, some rope, safety pins. I use safety pins to prop up my banner. Let's see, what else did I take with me? A pen and paper, always take a pen and paper. You might wanna take someone's details or you might want to write down what you've sold. I did that so I could keep track of inventory and what, what needed to, to be stocked up on. It's also worth taking a little pot to put your money in. I took with me about £30 in change. If you're selling things for 50p, make sure you've got some 50ps to give change. Always make sure you've got a lot of change with you. A few years ago, I remember going to my first craft fair and um, I just took £10 in £1 coins with me. And the first person came up to me with a £20 note. And I looked at them like, uh, I don't have change for you. And I lost that sale because they were like, oh, we'll move on. So now I make sure I have so much change with me because trust me, the first person that comes up to you will have a 20 pound note, guaranteed. <laughs> and my final tip 
is take a friend with you. I take my mum, I've taken my cousin and best friend Laura. It's always worth having someone with you. Please don't try and do them alone. Fairs usually run all day, so like my one on Sunday will be 11 till five. That's a very long day on your own. Yes, you might have people coming up and chatting to you, but if you want a drink or if you just want someone to talk to, it's a very long day. So I would definitely try and get someone to come and do it with you, just to, you know, give you a bit of company. My mum came to my last one and literally just sat behind the table on her little chair, reading her paper, having her tuna sandwich. <laughs> and But it was just brilliant because I had someone there who, you know, could pop and get me a drink. Or if I needed to go to the loo, she could just sort of stand at the table for me. It's definitely worth having someone with you, um, yeah, for the day. So those are my tips. I really, really hope they're useful. I. I've gone through my list and I have covered everything that I wanted to. So basically, if you're gonna take anything away from this, it is do a practice run. Do as many as you can. Make the table look as beautiful as you can. Really show off your products by having a really pretty table that people have to stop and look at because it's just so, so pretty. That was my goal. Have items at different price points. So whether it's a child coming up and they like a badge, they need to be able to quickly pay for it with a 50p or somebody that's got a hundred pounds on them and wants to spend it on your products. Have items for everybody. Make sure you've got insurance in place and print out a copy and take it with you just in case somebody asks for it. Have marketing materials on your table, business cards, leaflets, whatever you can so that if somebody can't make a purchase on the day, they can still take your card and know where they can buy from you or follow you or yeah, just keep in touch with you from then on. And finally, have fun, enjoy it. People are coming to see you and they're spending money on things you've made. I mean, it's just the biggest compliment ever. So enjoy every second, have a smile, say hello to people. If people are terrified to talk to you, run past your table as fast as they can, then just give them a smile because yeah, they'll probably follow you on Instagram afterwards. So if you want to follow any fairs that I have coming up, like I said, I've got one at the weekend, follow me on Instagram, that's where you'll find me. This channel is fairly new and is very small, <laughs> but yeah, I would love if you would subscribe. I show you what it's like working in my studio and working as a new mom. I have a six month old baby. And yeah, please tag me in any of your craft fair tables that you're that you're gonna do. I would love to see them. Thank you so, so much, and I will speak to you soon. Bye, guys.